I even remember where I was sitting. We were in a living room with a tiny, pretty tiny television. We were all sort of crowded around. My daughter, who was nine months old at the time, woke up and I suddenly remembered and dashed downstairs with her in my arms, almost dropping her. I more or less threw her into the living room. They stopped or, or delayed the rest of the racing to have uh, the loudspeakers broadcast the landing itself. This was a, a big deal to them and they recognized it for probably the most historical event that would take place in any of our lives. From a, an engineer's point of view, the, the, the technical involvement was incredible. There was a lot of incredible scientific thinking, strategizing, and of course execution. And when we landed on the moon and got those men back, that was just a spectacular, spectacular accomplishment. As soon as the coverage came on, we went and sat down and watched it beginning to end. Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. We have a liftoff. Liftoff on Apollo 11. I was about 10 years old and we were at home in Lubbock, Texas and I was watching TV with my dad who was so into this. It was black and white TV. He was a career Air Force pilot. So he was super into the whole idea of the technology, the courage of these pilots who became astronauts, you know. He felt very patriotic and, and competitive about it because I remember we talked about the Luna 2 that the Soviets had put on the moon unmanned in 59 and now here we were 10 years later and we were about to do the thing, the first man on the moon. Um, and I remember him recording it on a cassette recorder. He wanted the audio, the sound of it, so he could relive it over and over again. Of course, you know, today we'd have it taped or we'd put it on, you know, whatever it is on demand, but that's how into it he was. I was just a little kid, I was 10, so I grew up with the Jetsons. I thought this was the way things were. Of course we'd send a man to the moon, what's the big deal? But through his eyes, I got to see what an achievement it was, and that was really special. In 1969, I was an undergrad in the meteorology department at UCLA. Parents lived down in Long Beach, and I went down there because they had better TV than we had up at college. There had been so much anticipation for this, so, and I had been intimately following the space program pretty much since its inception. I still remember the day the first Sputnik went into orbit and the headlines and the shock by everybody that the Russians had gotten the first satellite in space. The United States was kind of afraid of what Sputnik was. The thing about it was they would announce when it was going to go over, you know, like 7.15 at night to 7.20, and we'd be out, if it was a clear night, uh, behind the house where it was the darkest, and we'd see it come over and it would blink and get, you know, it would fade and get brighter and fade and get brighter, and it took about I would say eight to ten minutes for it to pass over. It was interesting watching us try and catch up. We <laughs> we had many failures trying to get that first satellite into space. Well, I mean, we did a lot of being the second ones up. You know, we uh, early on had a lot of rockets blow up. Yeah, back then, uh, space exploration was, it still is very dangerous, but back then it was really, really dangerous in a crapshoot. And you just hope that people who went up into the, into the clear blue sky came back in one piece. I remember I was with my brother and my sister and my grandparents and we were in the living room of their farmhouse on a dairy farm in New Jersey. For days we had been told that we were going to get to watch this and every night we would go out and look at the moon and I, I was like full of questions like where are they going to step and where's it going to land? In 1969 I was going into my senior year of college and I think most people that watched the landing had some mixture of trepidation and anxiety maybe even fear. You could sense that it was a, uh, there was a lot of upheaval in the country at the time, and this was seen as such a patriotic thing. It was a, a troublesome time, and I think it's perfectly understandable now that I'm older for people who were older then to have the sense that the country was coming apart at the seams, that these young people didn't care about anything. But you know what? We did care about that moon landing. We wanted it to work as much as anybody else did. So I think that's one of the reasons why the moon landing stands out as not one of those things that was tearing us apart, but something that promised a better future, something that represented something that we had all worked on as a country and wanted and encouraged and believed in, and there it was, and so that made it special. This was the first reality show. I mean, it was all the phases of it. It was from the blast off, to, to orbiting the moon, to the separation of the limb, 
uh, to the landing of the lamb. And then the last culminating moment was Neil Armstrong stepping off the ladder onto the actual lunar surface. Okay, Neil, we can see you coming down the ladder now. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. We didn't say much. We sat there and watched, and I think everybody was kind of wide-eyed, but it was a, a moment to bring the country together, but it also was a nice moment to bring my family together. I just remember my grandparents were um, so awestruck by it. My grandfather was a quiet person, but my grandmother kept saying, kids, you'll remember this the rest of your life. Like, this is history. You're going to remember this the rest of your life. And then when he stepped onto the moon, there were tears in her eyes. You know, it's one of those things where you think, am I really seeing what I think I'm seeing here? It, I just thought it was really moving, even as a kid. And I just remember, again, my parents um, being so proud. And I think, you know, coming from a military family, that connection, too, made it really special. And, and I remember my dad saying, it's a whole new world. It's going to be different now. Airmen from the planet Earth. Upon the moon. I just remember my mom and I watching intently and just hanging on every word and all the pictures that came through the air was just a spectacular moment. I mean, everybody was excited, couldn't believe it, you know. I mean, it was, it was a feat, wasn't it? And to finally actually sat down on, on another body, astral body, what was, well, it's the only time, the only place that we've done it is the moon. Yes, indeed. They've got the flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. Flag up now, and you can see the stars and stripes on the lunar surface. But it was just, I mean, keep out in mind, this took place in no time at all. I mean, the, the, the length of time from inception to completion of this, I mean, you know, going back to when they launched the first satellites, things were so primitive. And the fact that we could actually get a person into space around the Earth was still mind-boggling. And the fact that you could send them all the way to the moon and land them, it was just, it, you couldn't really conceive of it. It just didn't, it did not seem real to step out that evening and look up at the moon and know, you know, in the Sea of Tranquility, you could look and see it easily. I have my observatory in the backyard that my dad had built for me, and it even had a rotating top, and it was on roller skates. He did an amazing job on the thing. And uh, yeah, so I spent a lot of time out there during the moon program. I was actually, earlier on, the, the Ranger spacecraft was the first American spacecraft to impact the moon, and it just went boom and hit it. And so there were a bunch of us amateur astronomers that were part of a big network that we watched to see if we could actually see it hit the moon, which we didn't. But it was pretty exciting to have all these people together and actually feel like you were actually part of the moon program. I think we've all heard the assessment that there's more computing power in our cell phones than there was at the disposal of the people that figured out how to send those guys to the moon. So it wasn't just pure computing power. There was a lot of incredible scientific thinking, strategizing, and of course execution behind all that, all the test flights that preceded it. You can't do anything but take your hats off to the scientists that were behind that. It was incredible. The Apollo um, program is an absolute blueprint for what we're capable of. Even looking back, you know, 50 years, the technology is is, is so outstanding, uh, astounding, uh, even 50 years later, that uh, they could achieve that. And you're cleared for takeoff. Roger, understand. We're number one on the runway. Seven, six, five, engine arm asset. It was a success, and you know they walked on the moon, and they got back in the lunar module. But then there was that whole anxiety about would they make it back safely, and would that capsule hold? And I remember there was some fear that it was burning more than it was supposed to. So again, I was like really nervous. And when it splashed down in the ocean, I didn't feel good about anything until we saw that everyone had survived. These guys were heroes to me. I. Uh at school, uh, the weekly reader would come and you could buy posters or, or books or whatever else. And um, I, think, I think I was able to scam my mom out of a quarter or two and, and get some posters. This was a big deal to my parents. Um, uh, why they recognized it as the event that it was, I don't know. But uh, um, they did and they made efforts. My mom still has the Life ma magazine. Um, those pictures um, are priceless to our family. 
I mean, it was a great period to live in, to grow up in, because that was such a big part of it. And it was one of those moments, too. I can't think of very many moments these days that actually unite the country and actually the whole world. That was one spectacular uniting moment. We were having this communal experience of something so um, astronomical, something so, so galactic. Uh, there'll never be another first time on the moon. It was one of those rare, rare events where, as, as the entire planet, I mean, we really were a planet that evening. Everybody's out, the crowds of people everywhere watching this live broadcast from the moon. I mean, it truly was a planet unifying thing, even if it only lasted for an evening. It's pretty amazing. I don't know that we'll ever experience anything like that again in our lifetimes.